Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Home Cinema Engineer here. And in today's video, I want to go over how doing stuff DIY or do it yourself can save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for your home theater. So as we all know, whether you're new to this or not, this is a pretty expensive hobby and interest or just passion. And everyone has different levels, which will you know determine how much they want to spend on this. But if you want you know, one of the best home theaters in the world, let's just face it, a lot of us don't have the funds to get that $100,000 or million dollar home theater. But there's a lot of stuff you can do to get it to that level. And I am by no means near that level yet, but every day, week or month, I'm slowly making progress to making this theater my ultimate home theater. Even though it's in a temporary space, I'm doing the best I can to make it the best that it can be for this space. And as I move into new places, it'll just continue to evolve until I get into my forever home. And even then, the journey never stops. But that's what's fun about this hobby. So in this video, I wanna go over everything in this theater that I made and did myself and how I was able to save money doing so. And a lot of this can be done with minimal power tools and handheld tools. You don't have to own an entire wood shop worth of tools in order to do some of the stuff I've done here. It certainly helps if you have a wood shop and a bunch of tools, but you don't have to spend thousands of dollars in order to do what I've done here. Okay, so first is gonna be what we're looking at right now, and that is the screen. Now this screen is a do-it-yourself acoustically transparent spandex screen. Now it's true, if you're familiar with my channel, you know that I'm about to swap out this DIY spandex material for screen material I got from Seymour Screens. And I'll have a video comparison for that when I do that. But regardless, the frame is still something I intend to use and it's something I made myself out of materials you can get at any local hardware store. And normally a screen this size being 135 inches and two four to one aspect ratio or cinema scope would run you anywhere between 1000 on the low end to up to $10,000 depending on the company you went for if you got a fixed frame screen. But this method, I believe, cost me less than $150 worth of materials. And that includes the spandex material that you see in front of you right now. All right, on to the next part where you can save a lot of money is if you have acoustic panels in your theater, and I highly recommend you do, is that you can make these yourself and the bulk materials will cost you around, depending on where you get them, 150 to about $200, but that will be enough material to make about eight of these panels. And these are two foot by four foot by three inch deep acoustic panels with rock wool insulation, MDF frame, and your choice of fabric. Now, if you click right here, you'll be able to pause the video and go back to my video on how I made these. And I'll also link it down in the description. But this theater currently has six of them and I made them all myself. And if you see these wires sticking into them, these are the ones that have my KEF speakers enclosed directly in the middle. So four of them have speakers inside them. These two. And these two right here. These ones right here are just your standard panels. I also have up on the ceiling two thinner one inch, two foot by four foot acoustic ceiling panels, which not only double as acoustic panels for the ceiling, but they also help to uh, darken up the space because I am unable and unwilling to paint the ceiling in here because I do not want to do that when I move out. Everything I Due to this space, I have to undo, so that's why I have opted not to paint the ceiling. Now, traditionally, panels this size with that depth usually run anywhere between $60 to about $100 per panel, depending on what company you get them from. So buying the bulk material yourself for about $150 to $200 allows you to make eight of them. And again, you don't need a wood shop in order to make these. Just some basic hand tools and you can make the exact same ones I did. 
Again, link in the description down below. Another thing I did was I made these two Dolby Atmos speaker enclosures myself in my wood shop. So now something like this, yes, you're going to need some wood shop skills and you're going to need a shop with all the basic um, staples that you would find in a wood shop. These are just Kef drivers that I purchased from Kef and then I custom designed and built this cabinet. So I have these two and I have still yet to hang up these two right here, which are gonna go over here, but that is coming shortly. So again, that's something where if I had bought the Kef speaker, that's this is modeled after, um, probably would have cost me an extra two or $300. Whereas building it myself, um, I was able to save probably around one or two hundred dollars. Now, one of the things I'm most proud of in this setup is this AV rack, which I built myself. Now, unfortunately, I built this way before I had this channel, and so I did not think to film it and or take any pictures of the build process. So, unfortunately, I can't tell you or show you how to make this. If I uh, get into my own home, which I'm hoping to do. Uh, I will probably need a larger one. So if I make one myself, which I probably will do, I will definitely make a video all about that. But there are plenty of YouTube videos online that will show you how to make something very similar to this. And now this is just three quarter plywood. Nothing fancy. I still got to finish the top. And the rack rails were bought online, I think at Sweetwater. And then all the rack mounted ears for the gear and all the um, shelving units and face plates were either purchased on Sweetwater, Amazon, or eBay. And now I highly recommend you buy this type of stuff used. This is not an area or thing that you need to buy brand new. Steel is steel, and so long as it's not bent and destroyed, it's there's no difference from it being used. So all this metal hardware you see, all of it was used. And again, AV racks, depending on their size, I believe this one is a 45 uh, U unit, RU unit. Um, but yeah, something this size, which is a nice medium size AV rack, easily cost you around 1000 to possibly $3,000 from companies like Santa's Middle Atlantic. This is another area where if you have the skill and yes, you would need a wood shop or a lot of different tools in order to make something like this, you can save yourself literally thousands of dollars. So if you have the means and the skill, I highly recommend that you make something like this instead of buying it. But then of course, nothing wrong with buying stuff brand new. I mean, if you have the means, then by all means, you know, buy stuff new. But even if you have the means, you know, everyone likes a good deal. Everyone likes to save money. So this is one of the ways where you can save literally thousands of dollars. I believe all the wood for this, I think I made this out of one sheet of plywood. So Baltic birch, you know, probably 50 or 60 bucks. Uh, the rack rails, um, which there are four in total, I believe it was less than $80 on Sweetwater and then all of the rack mounted shelves and ears and face plates. Again, I got used on eBay, but altogether, I think I spent less than $200. So all in all, probably about $400 here. Whereas again, I could have easily, you know, paid well over $1,000 for something like this. Next, we have the custom projector box that I made for my projector. So I did this for a couple of reasons. One, in this theater, um, because of the soffit that I have right here that has the air return, um, you know, there just was no way to mount it to this because um, there's just drywall and then maybe a small air gap and then the air return vent, which is, you know, sheet metal. So I didn't want to drill into that. So I mounted it to the wall right here. And because this model of protector has lens shift, I was able to put it off center and then just shift the image to fit my screen. So nothing fancy at all here. This is just made out of some scrap um, plywood, three quarter inch painted black. Another cool thing that I did was I uh, cut out a hole or right here and here 
and placed uh, AC Finity fan that runs on USB. So the projector itself has USB and it powers these fans. So this is the air intake and this is the air outtake. So in order to cool itself off, it sucks in air from here and then blows it around the fan. Um, I mean the light bulb and blows out the hot air here. So I have these fans pointed to where this one is sucking in cool air from the environment and it's going in that way. And then this one's flipped around and it is sucking the hot air out of it. So it'll help extend the life of this projector, the lamp, and um, keep it running as cool as possible. And even when they're on their highest settings, just you can't really hear them, especially not over the show or movie that you are watching. So again, this is something that can be made very, very cheaply to um, enclose and hide your projector. Again, this is probably less than $20 worth of wood. And lastly, this blackout wall. Now you can go with paint, and I did discuss this in another video, but um, this is another DIY thing I did. I didn't want to paint the wall because even the blackest paint you can get isn't really all that black. Um, and again, I didn't feel like painting it when I move out of here. So I went to my local fabric store and bought this triple black velvet and just thumbtacked it. And, um, you know, you can obviously see it because I have a light, steel light shining over here. But when that light is off, and especially when the theater lights are off, this wall just completely disappears and all you see is the floating screen. So um, it looks amazing and it does make a big difference. Really helps to drive your um, eyes to the screen and help you just concentrate on what's going on. So again, that's another way of getting a professional home theater type look for just um, a couple hundred dollars. I think it was about $120 for this much triple black velvet. And again, I know the theater is kind of um, in a state of mess right now. I'm still tidying up things. I know I got to still hide those wires. That screen material is hanging down because I'm about to dismantle this. So yeah, just remember everything that you see that's kind of messy and just, you know, aloof and not set up right is very temporary. The theater is always a work in progress. Last but not least, I made these uh, speaker enclosure cabinets for my LCR speakers, the KEF 3160 THX RL loudspeakers. They are in wall speakers, but I did not want to put them in this wall as I did not want to have to repair what I did once I move out. And um, this uh, setup right here allows me to uh, keep them mobile, allows me to put them at any height I want. They are on a French cleat system, which is a very strong method of holding stuff that is pretty heavy. I think the uh, speaker itself weighs about 25 pounds and the cabinet probably weighs, I think, 10 pounds. It's made out of MDF, very simple, um, easy to use material that is commonly used for uh, all sorts of uh, high-end speaker cabinets because it's a dense inert material compared to wood, but nothing too fancy, just a simple rectangular box. I went to Kef's website and got the maximum specs for their optimal internal cabinet volume. So these are to the size and spec to give them optimal performance for low end and mid range performance. The tweeter and mid range enclosure are enclosed in its own little cell back there. So yeah, nothing terribly fancy. Uh, again, this is something where you would need a wood shop. It's all DIY. All right, guys, that just about sums it up for this video. Once again, if you have some basic skills and some basic hand tools and power tools, you can pretty much do everything that I've done in this theater or your theater. Or if you have a friend who's really, really handy and has a shop, then you can get a little bit more advanced and uh, make some stuff, maybe have him or her teach you. And of course, YouTube is a great resource for learning how to do this type of stuff. Now, any of my future builds that I do and upgrades for this theater, anything I make, I will be sure to film 
for future videos. I wanted to do this video so you can get an idea of what's possible and how you can have uh, an amazing theater in any space, whether it's an apartment, a house, a basement, you name it. You can have an amazing theater and you can save hundreds and sometimes thousands and thousands of dollars if you just learn how to do some of this yourself. So until next time, thanks for watching guys. And if you haven't already, please consider hitting the subscribe button. It would help me out a lot. It's free. It's a great way to help this channel, help it grow, help me produce better and higher quality content as I'm wanting to invest more in the channel. And if you haven't already, please also hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when my next video drops. And please like the video if you found this helpful. Until next time, happy watching. Cheers.